It's kind of a meme in the Blender universe that in order to make anything, you have to delete the default cube. And so this has sparked several Twitter campaigns to save the default cube or respect the default cube and treat it more kindly. And several videos of the default cube getting mad and attacking back. But in this video, I do want to show you how to delete things, the default cube included. So in order to delete anything, we just have to select it and then go to the object menu and go down to delete. If you don't want to go all the way to the object menu, you can also use the right click context menu. And that's something we haven't talked about before, but it's really handy. So if we select our camera object, let's say we want to delete that one, then I can just right click, bring up my context menu and go down to delete. I'll select the light and let's delete that as well. Right click, go down to delete. There are a couple other ways to delete things, but in order to actually show you that, I have to add more objects to the scene. We can do that with the add menu. So let's go to add. And here we have all of the different categories of types of objects that we could add. If we want to add our cube back, we could go to mesh and cube. I'll go ahead and add more cubes here so I can show you more ways of deleting. But in order to actually see it once it's added, I'm going to hit G and then X to move this along the X axis and then add a new one, add mesh and cube. I'll move this off to the side again. And then one more time, add mesh and cube. So if we select this object and go to our right click context menu, then you'll notice that there's the X hotkey to the right of the delete command. So I can also delete something just by hitting X. Select it, hit X, and then hit delete to confirm. If you want to undo that, you can always hit control Z. And I'll do that twice to bring both of my cubes back. Or three times because selection also counts as an action here. But either way, now we have all three of our cubes back. Some people don't like the pop-up confirmation that comes up when you hit X because it asks you if you want to actually delete it or not. And then you have to do another click in order to actually delete it. Now, I find this helpful because the X hotkey is incredibly easy to hit by accident and you don't want to go around accidentally deleting things. However, if you want to delete something more on purpose and you don't want that pop-up menu, go ahead and just hit the delete key on your keyboard. That'll delete it instantly. I'll hit control Z to bring those cubes back. And the last way you could go about deleting stuff is through the outliner. Remember, that's the hierarchy view of your scene here. So if we just select our cube and then we can right click to bring up our context menu and delete it in the outliner, that of course will delete it in the 3D view as well. I'll hit control Z and undo that. And if we want to delete all three of these at the same time, then I can just select the top cube, hold shift just like I would in a file browser, and then left click the bottom cube to select everything in between those two. Then if I right click and hit delete, it'll delete everything. Now let's try to recreate our default scene, but instead of doing it through the add menu, I'll use the hotkey shift A. That's going to bring up that exact same add menu, but wherever my mouse is, so it's a lot more convenient. So I can hit shift A, mesh and cube to add my default cube. To add a camera, I can just hit shift A and go down to camera. There's only one type of camera, so it's the only option here. That's going to be invisible, but that's only because it's inside of our cube. So I'll go to my move tool and just move this off to the side and I'll move it up a little bit. Next, let's add a light. I'll hit Shift A, go up to Light, and choose Point. There are a couple other types of lights as well, and we'll talk a lot about those in the Lighting Fundamentals course. But for now, let's just go ahead and choose the point light and move it into place. All right, now we're more or less back to where we started. You may have noticed, though, that when we placed our objects, they all started at the exact center of our scene. But that's not always the case. It's actually dependent on the location of our 3D cursor which is this little life preserver crosshairs thing that you find in the middle of the scene that shines right through our objects. To move this around, we can just use the 3D cursor tool. So if we select that, which is right under the selection tool, then we can left click anywhere in the scene and place our 3D cursor there. So if I just place this way off into the distance here, and then I add a new object, again with Shift A, let's go up to Mesh and just add another cube, then it'll place it right there. You'll notice that the location of the cube in the properties editor is exactly where the location of that 3D cursor is. So again, I can left click with the 3D cursor tool, place this anywhere, and it'll also you know, snap to our objects here. Then hit Shift A, mesh, and add any one of these objects. Then I'll just hit G to move them around. If you don't want to switch back and forth between the selection tool and the 3D cursor tool, or the move tool and the 3D cursor tool, you can also just use the hotkey Shift and right click anywhere in the scene, and that'll place it as well. Now, one common thing that might happen is you might, you know, shift right click and place this way off into space, and then it might be really hard to actually get it back. 
I can get kind of close here, but it's hard to get it back to exactly in the center. And sometimes that's really helpful. So what we want to do is just snap our 3D cursor back to the middle. And we can do that by going to the object menu and going down to snap. So if we go to snap, we can choose either cursor to selected, which will snap it to the selected object. But right now I want cursor to world origin. That'll snap it back to 000 in the world. If I want to snap it to my selected object, I can just go to object, snap, and cursor to selected. Alternatively, we can also snap any object to our cursor. So I'll just hit shift and right click anywhere in this scene here. And let's say I want to move this cube over there. Then I can go to object, snap, and selection to cursor. This is an incredibly common function, especially setting the cursor back to 000. So there's a hotkey for it. If you don't want to go through the menus, you can hit shift S. That'll bring up a pie menu with all of these different options. The most important ones though are going straight down, which is cursor to selected or cursor to world origin. Then you can find selection to cursor up here on the top left. For now, I'll choose cursor to world origin. Before we move on, let's look at some of the other objects that are available to us. I'll go ahead and delete everything in the scene just by selecting everything with the A hotkey or going to select and all and then hitting delete on my keyboard. Then let's look at the other types of objects. If we go to our mesh menu, you can see that we have a bunch of different options here. These are all of our mesh objects, which are made up of vertices, edges, and faces. And we'll talk about that in just a second. First, I'll just select the plane. And as a quick way to zoom my viewport right to it, because right now I'm kind of off center, I'll just hit the home key on my keyboard. Now, as soon as I add a object and before I do anything else, remember we have this redo panel in the bottom left. I'll expand that a little bit. And by the way, if you want to pop this up without using the little bottom left area, you can also use the hotkey F9 and that'll bring up the exact same menu anywhere in your viewport. But directly after I add a new object, I can change some of its properties. For example, for this plane, I can change the size. That's really the only property it has. But if we add a different type of object, then we'll see more options. So let's go ahead and delete our plane, select it and hit delete, and then shift A to add a new object. And this time I'll add a circle. Now, if we look in at our bottom left Ryu panel, we can see that we can adjust the number of vertices. For example, if I want to make this a triangle, I can just drag this all the way to three or add however many I want. Then we can also change the radius or choose how it's filled. I'd recommend going through and playing with all of these different primitives. That's what the initial mesh objects are called because we can make pretty much any shape from these starting points. One of my favorite ones to use for examples is the monkey. That's just a classic blender object that's been around for forever. Her name's Suzanne, but I'll go ahead and delete her for now. If we hit shift A, we can also see that we have curves. That's a topic for another course, but if you add one, then you can see that we just have a smooth line. Working with a curve is a lot like working with the pen tool in Photoshop or Illustrator. I'll go ahead and delete our curve. Then after that, we have surface, which is similar to a curve, but a 3D curve. Uh, it's not particularly useful in Blender, so I almost never use it. They can be pretty powerful in other programs, but not quite so much here. After that, we have metaballs, which is a type of object that's just really fun to play with. If we add a ball, you can see it has this radius around it, and I can move this off to the side. Then I'll hit Shift A and add another meta ball. And now if I move these two close to each other, I'll select this one by selecting the ring that goes around it, hitting G. And if I move it towards the other one, it'll just start to intersect and kind of mesh together. And this is just really fun to play with. It's really great for creating a base for sculpting or things like that, but it's actually just really fun to mess with. So I'd recommend taking a second and playing with it here. I'll go ahead and delete these for now. We'll talk about the rest of these in detail in later courses, but just go through and browse. You can see we have text, volumes, grease pencil, which is used for 2D animation, armatures, which is for rigging and moving things around, lattice objects, which are for warping and twisting our objects, we have empty objects, images, lights, light probes, cameras, speakers, force fields, and instances. But for now, let's just stick to our mesh objects. One final way that we can add new objects is a little bit less practical, but also a lot of fun. And that's with the add tool. It's at the bottom of our toolbar. And the default one is add cube. To use it, we can just left click and drag anywhere. That'll create the base of our cube. And then if we release our mouse button, we can drag upwards or downwards to give it a height and then left click again to confirm. What's fun about this is that it's going to snap to any surface. 
That's because in the tool properties up here at the top, we have the snap to set to geometry and the depth set to surface. So I can just left click and drag on our cube here to place a little base on the side and then pull it outwards, left click to confirm. This little grid under our mouse helps us know exactly where it's going to start. If we left click and hold on the add cube tool, we can see that we have a bunch of other tools as well. We can add a cone, left click and drag to create the base, pull it up and left click to confirm. There's also an add cylinder. And with this one in particular, it might be helpful to use the shift hotkey in order to constrain this to be a perfect circle before pulling it upwards. Just like before, we can adjust the settings in the redo panel. But this redo panel is going to go away as soon as we select something else or click off of the object. And after that, we have add UV sphere. Again, I'll hold shift to make it a perfect sphere. And lastly, add icosphere which is a sphere, but just made out of triangles. So go through and practice adding new objects through the Shift A Add menu, and maybe practice adding objects through the toolbar as well. Also practice moving them around, rotating them, and deleting your objects. And when you're comfortable with that, then let's move on to the next lesson.